right, my name is Kelsey. I'm going to do, be doing my presentation over mastitis. Um, so basically what it is, is an infection in the mammary glands. Um, most commonly it's in females that are nursing. And one thing I learned recently that it will develop again once you get it. And the milk can have a bitter taste or it can be toxic in some very severe cases, which will make the young not want to drink it. And it can affect pretty much all animals, um, people included. And it's most commonly affected by, or caused by bacteria um, introduced through milking or environmental contact. This is more geared toward dairy producing, like dairy cows, so. So the, what your take home point there is the environment of the animal plays a big part in if it gets mastitis or not, right? Yeah. Okay. And there's two different types that I found. The acute septic mastitis um, develops like an infection within the mammary glands um, caused by bacteria. Um, the other one, galactitis? Galactostasis? Galactostasis. Um, it can happen when females experience like a false pregnancy. Um, the mammary gland isn't actually infected by um, bacteria, but I also read that this one can be caused by cancer. Okay, what animal is that? I know dogs have false pregnancy, so is that I think it's more of a dog, dog thing? thing yeah. Okay. And some symptoms are they're warm or hot to the touch, um, bruised, purplish, blue in color. They won't want to nurse because they, they'll be sore from the swelling and stuff like that. And they could lack production of milk. Okay, why, why don't you encircle, I, you've got a good inflamed mammary gland there. It looks like a dog, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a dog. And then, so forward from that, there looks like some normal. Yeah, it can affect like certain right. areas of the mammary gland. And it doesn't, you, you can have one or two teats that are infected and others are fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, some treatments, milking out twice a day, that's more so with dairy cattle. Um, and infusing intermammary treatments um, that can be with all animals and more severe may need antibiotics and non steroid steroidal anti inflammatory okay non steroidal anti inflammatories mm -hmm. and so my personal experience <laughs> okay lola I, I had a pig named lola she was a show pig um, <laughs> <laughs> she developed mastitis while she was nursing her fourth litter. We didn't actually know she was going to give birth because she wasn't developing milk yet. So we gave her oxytocin to make her develop milk. And then it turned out it was mastitis. And the pigs like couldn't slash refuse to you know, nurse for the first 24 hours and they didn't get the colostrum from their mother. Mm -hmm. She actually ended up having 14 pigs, and I think there's only 12 in this picture. Okay. But we lost all but one. You lost all but one. Because they didn't get the They colostrum. didn't get the colostrum, and there was no colostrum from anybody else around? It was at like three in the morning okay. when she gave birth, okay. so it was like we couldn't get anywhere to get it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And here's some more pictures of them. Okay, but this is like when they're a day or two old? Yeah. And they ended up all passing away. Yeah, it and was like within a month. Okay, within a month, yeah. yeah. Show you how important colostrum is. Yeah, it coats yeah. the stomach and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because after 24 hours, there's a thing called gut closure. So even yeah. if you gave the animal a colostrum, it wouldn't be able to absorb the antibodies. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it's hard, but uh, and for pigs it's hard, but you can freeze colostrum. Yeah. But that means you had to milk the sow mm -hmm. and then you know, milk some sow that had good colostrum, yeah. but it gets very she complicated. Was, she was our first to get okay. to Pharaoh that okay. year. Yeah, so, so like, yeah, she was like, it was a bad mm -hmm. scenario. And, then there's references. and there's your references.